hostile. Boys and girls of the Brotherhood of Steel continue to fight yeah. the good fight, folks. They've recently stepped up patrols in the downtown DC ruins in response to increasing sightings of everybody's favorite freaks, the super mutants. Without our buddies from the Brotherhood, I'm guessing the entire Capital Wasteland would have been overrun a long time ago. So if you see a knight or a paladin out there fighting your battles for you, give them a big thanks. Or even better, some ammo.
Thanks for listening, children. This is Three Dog. When you're listening to Galaxy News Radio, we're Radio Free Wasteland, and we're here for you. And now, some music. Hello. What do you need? No problem, as long as you're good for it. If the price is right, make me an offer. Another satisfied customer. Later. They say recent events have made the world seem like a better place. I hope all of you out there can smile and feel better knowing that it's true. Can I interest you in an extremely rare refreshment? It's called a Nuka-Cola Quantum. It's much better than your average Nuka-Cola. It even glows in the dark. For only 100 caps, you'll be the first to find out. I was on my way to Gertershade to sell it to the lady there but you could save me the trip. Well, it'll save me the trip. Fine, you've got a deal. Enjoy. Bye. How delightful to have such an amazing imagination.
Remember me? Tinker Joe at your service. Robots for sale, robots serviced while you wait. Interested? Of course you would, of course. Well, it just happens that I've got a beaut of a deal on this customized Gutsy. And it's not just Mr. Gutsy. He's a full-fledged sergeant. Sergeant RL-3, to be precise, the pride of General Atomics International. Comes complete with a simulated personality unit, so he's good protection and good company, too. And all yours for just 1,000 caps. To tell the truth, it is a little trouble, but he can't help the way he got built. General Atomics programmed the Mr. Gutsy to be a good soldier, but their definitions were a bit vague, so a lot of units had issues. So we got a gung-ho robotic soldier that's picky about the company he keeps, but he seems to like you, so it'll be fine. I'll just transfer the codes and you've got a deal, friend. Here's hoping for the best for you and the sergeant alike. Have a look and see for yourself. Bye. Move along, please. Salutations, Commander. Sergeant RL3, Gutsy Class, robotic soldier reporting for duty. Please, do you have any water? I'm so thirsty. Oh, I guess that's understandable. Gotta watch out for numero uno and all. Just leave me. And tell Tenpenny he can kiss my ass. We've got plenty of bottle caps. Let me in, goddammit. How many times do we have to go through this? You're not getting in. I can stand here all day yelling at you through this damn speaker if I have to. I've already told you Tenpenny won't allow zombies to live here. Who the hell are you calling a zombie? You're definitely not human, that's for damn sure. For the last time, no zombies allowed. Can't you tell the difference between me and a feral? Fine, I'll show you the goddamn difference. Just you wait. You'll get yours, all of you. 
really not in the mood, so leave me alone. I thought I told you to get the hell out of here. Tenpenny doesn't want your goddamn caps, and I don't want the goddamn headache. For the last time, get your rotten, ugly, goddamn ghoul ass off Mr. Tenpenny's private property. Oh. Thought you were that damn ghoul. Well then, back to business as usual. <laughs> You were trespassing on Alistair Tenpenny's private property. Renters in official business only. <laughs> That's rich. What would a man like Tenpenny want to do with a waste rat like you? Just a minute. Let's not be hasty. If Tenpenny is interested in what you have to say, I suppose you should get your chance. Though he normally conducts all his business through Mr. Burke. If Tenpenny doesn't want to talk to you, then you best leave him alone. If you bother Mr. Tenpenny or any of his residents, I will be very glad to forcibly show you out. Do we understand each other? Good. Welcome to Tenpenny Tower. Don't do anything stupid. I'm not here for your entertainment. I'm talking to myself. Millicent, have you ever thought of making friends with the other ladies in the tower? Not that I mind your constant company or anything. Edgar, I do believe you are trying to shake me off. The fire has finally died away, has it, Edgar? You fancy someone else these days, do you? No, 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 of course not, you silly woman. It's just that I, well... I think spending time with the other ladies in the tower might do you some good. You know, the other ladies and I don't get along famously. They're quite jealous of me, naturally. Edgar, dear, Mr. Hawthorne sure has pickled himself, hasn't he? That man exists in a constant state of inebriation. I wonder what drives him to the bottle so. Yes, dear. Sometimes I get the feeling you're off in your own little world. Uh-huh. Sometimes I get the feeling I'm talking to myself. Introductions are in order. I am Mrs. Edgar Wellington. You may refer to me as Madam or My Lady Wellington. You're better mannered than your apparent breeding would indicate. It is nice to make your acquaintance. You didn't happen to catch a glimpse of any ghouls on your way in here, did you? That doesn't surprise me. You should talk to Gustavo. He might be able to use someone like you. Things haven't been the same since those ghouls showed up. Has everyone on edge? Again with the ghouls! It's all anyone will gossip about. I can't help thinking about them. Doing things to us. Let's talk about something else. Really? How? Wait, I, I... I don't really want to know. It probably entails something wickedly awful. Just talking about it will give me the jeepers. Chief Gustavo will want to know you will help. He might even be able to offer you something for your troubles. Don't be a stranger. Edgar Wellington II. Have you met my wife, Millicent? Hold on, who let you in here? <laughs> Very well. As long as security is aware of your presence. Can't be too careful these days, what with these ghouls and all. Gustavo says he has the situation well in order, but I wonder if he's really trying. Don't suppose you ran into any ghouls on your way in here? Oh my, it sounds like you might be just the person we need to take care of the situation. Talk to Gustavo. It's the place to live, the only place one finds any modicum of civilization and breeding. 
Of course those ghouls are trying to move in here. Can you fancy that? Disgusting zombies? Living in a place like this? <laughs> really now? There's a pack of zombies living nearby in some old tunnel. They asked to move in, naturally. They were told to go to hell. Gustavo's hired some additional goons. Seems to be working. Still makes one a bit fidgety having those loathsome creatures around. I wouldn't even want them as slaves. Really? Well, it's your funeral, I suppose. You'll want to discuss it with Chief Gustavo first. Goodbye. I'm on duty, can't talk. Direct your security concerns to Chief Gustavo directly. Yes, that's locked, and yes, I can see you eyeing it. I'm on duty, can't talk. Direct your security concerns to Chief Gustavo directly. Hey there. Edgar, that Mr. Burke is a shady character, isn't he? Yes, Commander. I will keep this location secure. Yes? Welcome to Boutique La Chic. I'm Lydia Montenegro, proprietor. Here you'll find only the best, with a price tag you can boast about to your friends. Your taste in shopping venue is impeccable. How may I assist you? He stays in his penthouse suite most of the time, so long as we pay the rent. He lets us live here. Tenpenny is a classy place. Just look at me. Look at my shop. Can't find top shelf class like that anywhere else. Indeed, though Tenpenny has put a lot of work into restoring it, and he's hired security to keep us safe, but they seem to be having some trouble with a pack of ghouls living in the tunnels nearby. Don't suppose you've encountered many ghouls on your travels? I bet you could. Talk to Gustavo. He could use someone like you. You could kill those ghouls in the tunnels. Get rid of them once and for all. If they got in here, they'd get their filth over everything. You can smell them a mile away. I hope they come back and get killed by security. Really? Perhaps you can. We'd all be terribly grateful. Chief Gustavo will want to know you're willing to help. My boutique has many unique items for the discerning customer. It's been a pleasure doing business. Pleasant day to you, dear.
We are safe from the wasteland in here. Hello. Tenpenny Tower is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Well, well, what have we here? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Susan Lancaster. Perhaps we can become better acquainted in the near future? Me too. Especially rich, fine young men. Hmm. Listen, you look like you can handle yourself. You survived out there in the wasteland getting here after all. You ever have to deal with ghouls? You're exactly the kind of man we need around here. Chief Gustavo and his pack of goons aren't doing their job. Those ghouls keep coming back. Somebody's bound to get hurt sooner or later. Beats living out there in the wasteland, trust me. See, I'm not like these other puffed-up fogies. I earned my way into privilege. I worked to get here. Are you going to do something about the problem or not? You're something else. Not like these other losers. Yeah, goodbye. Hey, Tenpenny Tower is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Good to see you. You're new around here. I'm Margaret Primrose. I run the Café Beaumont. Stop by sometime. Every day it's the same thing. The man has no imagination with his meals. But it's his building, so every day I make that damned iguano bit sandwich, no salt, with a peeled pear on the side. Send it up to the penthouse. It's a great place to live. I've always dreamed of giving people fresh meals and a place to relax and enjoy a good conversation or two. Tenpenny gave me a place to do that. I'm greatly indebted to him for that. Indeed. Everyone who lives here has worked hard to get here. That's why we can't just let those ghouls in. They demand the right to live here, but what have they done to prove themselves worthy? There must be something we can do. Talk to Gustavo. He might have some way for you to assist us in dealing with the problem. Chief Gustavo assures us that he's increased the number of the security team and will kill any zombies on sight. Really? Well, that'd be wonderful. Talk to Chief Gustavo about it. What are you in the mood for? Enjoy your meal. Don't be a stranger to the cafe. Charming of you to say so. Good to see you. Perhaps you and I should start spending some time together, eh? Well, be <laughs> Morning. Caviar, Hello. <laughs> we are safe from the wasteland in here. On duty, can't talk. Direct your security concerns to Chief Gustavo directly.
Nice to see you. Doing well, I hope? I'd be better if I could get my hands on some caviar. But what can you do? <laughs> Welcome to new urban apparel. I carry the finest in pre-war clothes. Hurry up, let's get you out of those old rags and into something fabulous. With my fashion sense and your bottle caps, there is no limit to what we can do for your image. I can't wait to get started. A very well-dressed gentleman, when he bothers to get dressed, he hardly ever leaves his penthouse suite. Only those deserving to live here can afford it. And let me tell you, those who do live in style. And you can thank me for that. I'm the resident guide to all things fabulous. And I'll tell you what isn't ever in style. Disgusting ghouls getting their rotting paws all over everything. Wow! You're a brutal thing, aren't you? You're right, of course. You should offer to help Gustavo and his troopers in fighting those ghouls. They were told they can't live here, but those zombies are too stupid to understand. They live in their own filth, squatting in the nearby metro tunnel. Security keeps shooting them, but they keep coming back. Hmm. You're certainly welcome to try, aren't you? Talk to Chief Gustavo. I only carry the finest garments. You must come back soon. Ta-ta. We are safe from the wasteland in here. Morning. My name is Tiffany Ching. My miserable excuse for a husband is Comrade Irving Ching. And you can tell him I said so. Do you know he tried forming a committee to discuss the ghoul situation? A committee! He made himself chairman, of course. What we need is somebody to do something. Not just talk about it. Don't suppose you know anything about ghouls, do you? That's terrific. A real man of action. That's just what we need. It's very clean and safe here. Well, mostly safe. They say those ghouls won't get in, but I don't know. They're living in the nearby tunnels. They scare me. Why doesn't somebody do something? Really? Chief Gustavo is going to want to hear about that. You should talk to him right away. Bye now. Morning. I'm Michael Hawthorne. Who are you? And more importantly, should I care? Oh, fine. We'll have to share a drink sometime. I'm always in the Federalist Lounge. There's certainly plenty to drink about. Take those ghouls, for example. Don't suppose you know anything about dealing with their kind, do you? Really? Fantastic! You can give that Gustavo a lesson or two. Well, it's a great place to live. If you don't mind ghouls breathing down your neck. We haven't discussed this already? Apparently, there's a pack of zombies living in the tunnels. Gustavo says he has it under control. On the bright side, it's given me another reason to hit the drink. Yeah? Talk to Gustavo. 
He may wish to employ your assistance. Right on. Good Tenpenny Tower is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Don't even think of breaking into that. Welcome to the Federalist Lounge. I'm Shakes. Wet your whistle. I see, sir. Very well. May I pour you a drink? He is the right lord and master of Tenpenny Tower. Or at least that's what my files say. Don't you worry about any such thing, sir. Care to wet your whistle? Hello. A very special welcome to you, sir. I have an excellent selection of thirst quenchers. Just call me if you want that freshened. Cheers. Ah, hello. Welcome to Tenpenny Tower. Hey. I am Comrade Cheng, beloved leader of the people, shining servant of the community. How can I help you? Thanks, Comrade. I'm sure you'll agree the people are only as strong as their leader. That's why I do my best to serve the community to the fullest. Speaking of service to the community, I don't suppose you are familiar with ghouls, are you? More importantly, how to kill them? I formed a committee to investigate the problem. Well, I'll try not to be bothered then. And perhaps you should speak to Comrade Gustavo about getting rid of them altogether. Well, Comrade, things are great. The best of the best have made a community here. Well, there is that problem with the ghouls, but I think it'll be solved soon enough. I'm sure it will end in bloodshed. It's serious business, Comrade. Excellent! Speak with Comrade Gustavo. He'll know what to do. Good travels to you, Comrade. How are things? Later. Charmed, I'm sure. Charmed, I'm sure. Hey! Herbert Dashwood, damn glad to meet you. Call me Daring, everyone else does. Maybe you've heard the GNR radio play? 
The Adventures of Herbert Daring Dashwood? That's about me, you know. Based on my, um, earlier days. I even had a ghoul manservant. Let me ask you, you ever met a ghoul before? Well, then you know that some ghouls aren't feral and can be reasoned with. Those ghouls that keep trying to get into Tenpenny, they need to stop before someone gets hurt. I think they live in the nearby metro tunnels. Well, until recently, the only danger you ever faced in this fine establishment was bumping into all the bloated egos floating around. But now there's a group of ghouls nearby. I've tried explaining that they don't all want to eat you, though some do, of course. Problem is, it's hard to tell which is which. Chief Gustavo has initiated a shoot first and ask later policy. If they're smart, they'll stay away. Some ghouls moved into the nearby metro tunnel. There's a bunch of the so-called feral ghouls in there, but a handful seem the sociable type. I've tried explaining to my fellow tenants that not all ghouls are monsters, but they don't seem to care. The intelligent ones should stay away from our trigger-happy protectors. If there are enough feral ones, though, eh, they could overwhelm security. Aha! An adventurous soul like myself. If I wasn't retired, I might come with you myself. Haven't you ever heard the radio play? The Adventures of Herbert Daring Dashwood? That guy at the radio station put it together a few years ago. He did it in the style of those shows they had before the war. Came out pretty well. And it's all true. Rockopolis, Miss Chase, all of it. Of course, they do portray me as a bit of a chump. Argyle may have saved my hide more than once, but I had my moments. Ah, those were the days. Argyle was my manservant. Ah, but that's really just a fancy word for the guy who saves my sorry skin on a regular occasion. He was a ghoul, you see. Been around since before the war. We met when I stole his girlfriend back in 41. We've been best friends ever since. We got separated a long time ago and never reunited. If you find Argyle out there somewhere, you be sure and tell me, okay? Go get him! spotted over in Arafu, where the settlement has been hit pretty hard lately by a marauding gang of riotous ruffians. But it would seem that after 101 made a little solo sojourn into the murky depths of Moresti Station, the attacks stopped. The cherry on top? He emerged a short time later with a lad named Ian West, who presumably had been taken captive in the latest raid. So what happened down there in the stinking, slinking subway tunnels? Friendly chit-chat? Or a classic case of shotgun diplomacy? In the end, I guess it doesn't really matter. Arafu is quiet once more, thanks to the efforts of a lone wanderer from Vault 101. Until next time, this is Three Dog! Ooh! And you're listening to Galaxy News Radio, bringing you the truth, no matter how bad it is. Up next, we've got a public service announcement. Listen up, children, this stuff's important. For all you guys and gals tempted by the thought of scabbing in the downtown DC ruins, here's a tip. You see, children, the Frankensteins might violently and horrifically rip you to shreds, but only if you're lucky. According to most of our reports on the super mutants, they actually prefer capturing their victims and hauling them off to God knows where. Consider yourself officially warm. Now, some music.
Yes? Hey! We are safe from the wasteland in here. You're just humoring me, aren't you? You haven't heard a word I've said, have you? Uh, sorry, dear. Must have dozed off there for a moment. Sometimes I get the feeling I'm talking to myself. Hey! Charmed, I'm sure. Edgar, dear, have you ever wondered why the only house call that Dr. Banfield makes is to that Susan Lancaster's room? How positively shame. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Charm. Are you I'm even sure. listening to me? Uh huh. I would surely have perished if it wasn't for Mr. Tenpenny and his tower. Welcome to Tenpenny Tower.
Mr. Tenpenny isn't taking callers. Hold on there a minute. Oh, all right, I'll let you in, but if Tenpenny hollers because he isn't expecting you, you're dead. to see you. Carry on. Fancy that! A visitor! I seldom get visitors, which is a tiresome shame, because I'm usually relentlessly bored out of my right mind. All of these confounded people fluster about like I'm made of eggshells and about to fall to pieces in any moment. I'm surprised they even let you in. So, what do you think of my fine tower here? It's quite the jewel of the wasteland, isn't it? I dare say I'm quite proud of it myself. Right, oh, when I saw this place jutting up out of the horizon, I knew what I had to do. I hired some muscle, and we got this place fixed up right quick. I had the great fortune to run into Mr. Burke, an absolute gem of a man. He certainly has a way of getting done what needs to get done, doesn't he? Then it was a matter of getting the right type of tenants with the right type of assets, and the rest is, as they say, history. Oh, it's impolite for a gentleman to talk about himself, but I'd hope this magnificent tower would speak volumes. Some might say Tenpenny Tower is my crowning achievement, but no. No, no, my dear boy, it is just the beginning. I complained offhand one day about how I thought that heap of metal on the horizon was a bit of an eyesore. Mr. Burke offered to take care of it. Burke is such an agreeable man, isn't he? I don't know how I got along without him. I practically don't have to think about things anymore. He takes care of everything. I seldom even have to ask. He's a real go-getter, that one. We need more men like him if we're going to rebuild the world. Well said, indeed! You've got the entrepreneurial spirit! It gives me hope to see young people such as yourself with real heads on their shoulders. Righto, run along now. You watch yourself. You cause any more trouble, and you'll be dead. Hey there. This better be important. I guess we could do a little trading. Here's what I got. Another satisfied customer. Ten Penny is always on time with the money and we can get fairly comfortable digs with side benefits. He owns this building. We get our caps from him, and don't you forget it.
That damn Roy Phillips won't take no for an answer. Keep showing up, looking for a handout. He and his kind aren't wanted. End of story. If I were a betting man, I'd place a stack of caps on him trying something violent soon. And that would make Tenpenny nervous. I don't like it when Tenpenny gets nervous. But I can't spare the manpower to go hunt down Roy Phillips and his band of misfits, or I'd gladly end this thing once and for all. You serious? You don't know what a ghoul is? A goddamn disaster waiting to happen, that's what they are. Sure, maybe you can get over the fact that they look like someone took a cheese grater to their face. But it's what you don't see that's the problem. The radiation slowly eats away their brain. Then they go zombie on you. It's better for everyone to kill them before all that, if you ask me. Really? You? You're welcome to give it a try. But don't come crying to me when you get hurt. They've holed up in the nearby metro tunnels. They're living with packs of feral ghouls. Be careful. Roy seems damn close to turning zombie himself. I suppose you won't be doing this out of the kindness of your heart, hmm? How's 500 bottle caps sound? Payable upon termination of that damn ghoul, Roy Phillips, and all his followers. Listen up good. I'm running the show here, not you. Now get the hell out of here. Here, you can take this rifle and ammo, but don't waste it shooting at shadows. Roy Phillips and his gang are somewhere in Warrington Station metro tunnels. They've barred the main entrance. Try going through the train yard. Like I tell my men, don't bother reporting in unless it's to tell me you got the job done. Watch your back, and don't trust that Roar Phillips for a second. RL3 stands at attention, sir. RL3 is ready for another tour of duty, sir. No time to dilly-dally, sir. What is it? RL3 comes equipped with everything a good soldier needs, but your RL3 can assist in carrying equipment if needed. Hello. RL3 is ready for another tour of duty, sir. Yes, sir. Lead on. and gals ever seen a tree? No, no, no. Not those shriveled black things. I'm talking real trees. Brown bark, green leaves, photosynthesis, all that good stuff. Now what if I, the all-powerful three dog, bow, wow, wow, would it tell you that somewhere right here in the capital wasteland is a place Lots of trees. A veritable oasis of green in that depressing sea of brown. Look, it was years ago, and I may have been experimenting with Jet at the time. But I'm telling you, 
It's out there. Thanks for listening, children. This is Three Dog. Ow! And you're listening to Galaxy News Radio. We're Radio Free Wasteland, and we're here for you. Up next, we've got a public service announcement. Listen up, children. This stuff's important. Don't feed the Yawgwai. That is all. <coughs> now, some music. <laughs> I'm tickled pink, that things are rosy, and skies are blue once again. <laughs> Let the bygones go bye-bye. No more will I sigh or cry. I'm tickled pink, the moon is yellow, and I'm your fellow.
You there! Put your weapons away! Come over here! No funny business, unless you want to get shot.
What are you doing here? It's not safe for your kind around here. It's your own funeral, then. Just remember that when you die, you die alone. Then you just rot until some jackal comes and snacks on you. I've been stomping around with Roy and his gang of misfits. Roy's a no-nonsense, take-no-prisoners kind of guy. He heard about this Tenpenny asshole, and now he's trying to get us in that tower. He's hatching some kind of plan to kill all those bigot bastards. Believe it or not, I used to vacation there. I wasn't always like this. I was a goddamn scientist. We were doing great things. Amazing things. Sure, sacrifices were required. Some people got hurt. But we were making real progress. But then those goddamn bombs dropped. Karma's a real bitch. You'd be wise to remember that. Oh yeah? Is he expecting you? Well then, run along. It's not wise to keep Roy waiting. Has a bit of a temper, that one. You watch yourself. Figures. He's Tenpenny's adorable lapdog, isn't he? So what's your angle in all this? Open your eyes, kid. Does it look like I got a fortune? Now bugger off before I get angry.
do you want? Biding our time, making plans, getting ready. Tenpenny and his pack of elitist wannabes can't keep us out of that tower forever. We've got rights, and we'll take them if they aren't given to us. Ghouls aren't built for luxury and comfort, is that it? You think ghouls belong scurrying around in that dark dank underbelly of the wasteland? You got a lot of nerve. Not sure where you come from, kid, but out here in the wasteland everything's up for grabs. And you only get to keep what you can hold on to. Tenpenny didn't build that tower. He found it. And took it from whoever used to own it. Now we're gonna take it from him. We tried playing nice, but they shot at us. Fuck them. It's time for them and their bigot ways to die. If I'm no better than Tenpenny, then he should let me into that tower. But he won't, so I'm busting in. That's the smartest thing you've said since you met me. What do you want? So you killed a bunch of feral ghouls. Is that supposed to sound impressive? I got no compassion left for those mindless freaks. But they were a nice deterrent keeping out smooth-skinned bastards like yourself. You better choose your next words really carefully, cause you're starting to piss me off. Sure, whatever you say, you pretentious two-faced asshole. Maybe I misjudged. Pardons. So yeah, people treat us like shit, but it just makes us stronger. Otherwise we ain't no different than anyone else that had the misfortune to live past infancy. Is that so? He isn't man enough to do it himself? Sends a boy to do his dirty work. You think you got what it takes? I see. That's smart of you. I'd lay you flat if you tried anything stupid. So don't. Tenpenny and his pack of elitist wannabes are in for a real treat soon enough. They can't keep us out of that tower forever. You're right. It's none of your business. You best get out of here, kid, before something ugly happens. Evening. Oh, hello. I'm Bessie Lynn. I... I don't think you should be down here. Did you talk to Roy? I, I hope you know what you're doing. You could get in a lot of trouble by coming around uninvited. Oh, my. I guess I was just trying to be nice. Am I babbling again? I tend to do that when I'm nervous. Oh, uh, you don't make me nervous. I mean, Roy says not to show weakness. Have you met Roy? He's killed lots of people before. I'm his gal. He protects me. So better not try anything. Roy is coming up with a plan to get us into that tower. Ten pennies. Says it's only a matter of time. He's strong like that. He never gives up. The kind of guy who makes things happen, Roy is. That's why the others follow him. Me, I just like the way he looks at me. Makes me feel pretty again. I'd go anywhere with him. Oh, well, it's not so bad, I guess. Once you get used to it. But it's not like before. I used to be pretty, you know. Everyone used to come around all the time. People stop wanting to be around you, though. When it starts to happen. When you start to change, I mean. Please don't hurt me! Oh, well, we don't really have much, um... HELP! Hey! Every day is a day to die! Ha! Now enjoy kicking this shit. Look out! Angry cool on the
Give me a second. Keep your panties on. RL-3 is ready for duty, sir. I will keep this location secure. I'm off duty. Come back when... Ah, uh, what the hell. Let's just get it over with. I'm Dr. Banfield. What do you need? My current theory is that the destructive disease of the ghoul condition will always eventually render him little more than a mindless killer. The proverbial wasteland zombie with a predilection for raw human flesh. They can't be cured. And there's nothing to alleviate the symptoms. All in all, it seems rather sad, really. I wish you luck. You want to talk to Chief Gustavo first. He may be able to lend you a soldier or two. People are healthy here. They eat well and have a strong roof over their head. Tenpenny is very selective about who he allows to live here. The correct genes and living conditions make for a relatively disease-free environment. Clean water is still a concern, of course. But we've got enough chems to keep the radiation sickness at bay. That's why he won't allow those ghouls to live here. Why introduce a weakness into a healthy system? I wasn't meaning to imply they should be slaughtered. Though I suppose these days that might be the best solution. He's the landlord, although you hardly ever see him. I had to treat him once for bed sores, if you know what I mean. Wait, don't tell him I said that. Don't get hurt out there. Good to see you. Huh. Didn't think you had it in you. Guess you proved me wrong. Good job. Knowing those ghouls are gone takes a load off my mind. Thanks. You'll be wanting the reward now, won't you? I suppose you've earned it. There's your caps. Contract fulfilled, debt paid. This don't mean we're buddies, all right? Now get going. I still got my eye on you. We may be alike, but don't take me for stupid. I got my eyes on you. Stands in attention, sir. 
Colonel 3 is ready for another tour of duty, sir. Yes, sir.